Hello everyone, thanks for watching this lecture. In this lecture, we will be discussing cardiac and vascular function curves as they apply to the USMLE Step 1 exam. These curves graphically display the relationship between cardiac and vascular function and how changes in ionotropy, venous return, and total peripheral resistance can affect these functions. To start, let's first define some terms. Ionotropy refers to the contractility of the heart muscle. Venous return is the amount of blood returning to the heart from the body's peripheral circulation. Total peripheral resistance is the resistance that the blood vessels in the body offer to blood flow. When we plot cardiac output and venous return on the y-axis and right atrial pressure on the x-axis, we get a cardiac function curve. This curve shows how changes in right atrial pressure affect cardiac output and venous return. The cardiac function curve is primarily affected by changes in ionotropy. An increase in ionotropy results in a shift of the curve upward and to the left, meaning that for a given right atrial pressure, cardiac output and venous return will increase. Similarly, a decrease in ionotropy will result in a shift of the curve downward and to the right. Let's briefly discuss why. If you increase the ionotropy or contractility of the heart, you will create an increase in stroke volume and therefore an increase in cardiac output. This increase in stroke volume translates to in an increased cardiac output at the same or lower right atrial pressure. The opposite is also true. Decreased ionotropy and therefore contractility means that there will be less cardiac output at a given right atrial pressure. Increases in catecholamines, exercise, and certain medications such as milrinone and digoxin may increase the overall ionotropy. Conversely, pathologic states such as heart failure or medication-induced catecholamine blockades such as beta blockers may result in decreased ionotropy. On the other hand, changes in venous return can affect the vascular function curve without changing ionotropy. An increase in venous return will result in a shift of the vascular function curve upward and to the right while a decrease in venous return results in a shift of the curve downward and to the left. This means that increased venous return without an increase in ionotropy will increase the right atrial pressure and therefore the stroke volume, leading to an overall increase in cardiac output. The opposite is also true. Decreased venous return without a change in ionotropy results in decreased cardiac output. Increases in venous return may occur in the setting of the administration of maintenance or bolus IV fluids in the hospital. Similarly, severe blood loss, known as hemorrhage, may result in decreased venous return. Lastly, changes in total peripheral resistance also affect the cardiac function and vascular function curves simultaneously. An increase in total peripheral resistance results in a shift of the curves downward, while a decrease in total peripheral resistance re results in a shift of the curves upward. This makes sense as a decrease in resistance means it is easier for the heart to pump blood, which is an increase in cardiac output, and that it is easier for the blood to flow, which is an increase in venous return. Of course, the opposite is true. Increased total peripheral resistance will decrease the cardiac output as well as the venous return. Total peripheral resistance may increase if a patient is given a vasopressor, such as an alpha-1 agonist, which would cause the arteries to constrict. On the flip side, exercise will actually reduce the total peripheral resistance as the body tries to increase blood flow to the capillary beds. It's important to know that these changes are not necessarily isolated from each other. As stated in this lecture, exercise not only increases ionotropy, but also decreases the total peripheral resistance. Keep this in mind as you learn how various physiologic or pathophysiologic states affect the cardiovascular system. In summary, the cardiac function curve is a useful tool for understanding how changes in ionotropy, venous return, and total peripheral resistance can affect cardiac output and venous return. A shift of the curve to the left or upward represents an improvement in cardiac function, while a shift to the right or downward represents a decrease in cardiac function.